Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. For those who follow the channel, uh, they know I make clips to keep all the lunar waves in one piece of footage. Here's all 10 of them. Um, for those of you that follow me all the time, uh, you will have seen much of the footage in this clip, but you will not have heard the things I'm going to say. What I'm going to talk about here is what we know about the lunar wave, and I'm also going to go on the record as claiming discovery rights as of September 26th, and I think it's 8.30 at night, uh, in 2012, the first time that I shot the lunar wave just after the fall equinox. So to get into what we know about the waves, most of the wave filmings have been near equinoxes, um, very near equinoxes. Even this last filming uh, from Berlin, Germany, you know, in March, we're going to have an equinox here. This one is maybe the furthest away, but I believe we had one that was just after the, uh, the summer solstice in June. Um, I think it was less than 30 days away from the summer solstice, but most of them have been filmed at equinoxes. So from, from the moment that I filmed and actually understood what the 2012 filming of the lunar wave meant, um, and it took me a while to understand because when I first shot it, I too was thinking equipment failure and all kinds of things. But when I had the epiphany um, and understood what the footage meant, um, these are the things that are really now confirmed by the six other people that have shot this ten times. Um, ten pieces of footage shot by six independent systems, two from Germany, all the rest shot in the United States. We know for a fact that two of the clips that I shot prove that the wave does not cross the video frame, that it stops at the edge of the moon. Um, in those two clips, there's enough ambient light, and in the September filming, we're in the summertime that was shot at 8.30. Um, it's just not completely pitch black yet out here, and uh, even with a full moon, depending on what your camera settings are, you can have enough ambient light so that it's not jet black. So that is one of the first things we know. We know for a fact that this is local to the moon and uh, it's not just my footage that shows this. As you go through and watch the videos that are running in the background of this it becomes pretty evident but again if we reference the 2012 footage um, a year after I shot that when I got better video tools and I began to run filters and other things you can see a pulse that wraps around a sphere. You can see that the wave, because in that footage it is the most dominant and easily easily seen wave of all the footage that I've done, um, you can see a bow in the wave as it travels over the sphere of the moon, particularly when it starts across the equator. And uh, I have measured the bow, and if you follow my channel, you understand that each pixel has a distance value, and that is completely dependent on the system that's shooting it, whether you're doing video or stills, and also on what the distance of the moon is. But nonetheless, those pixels have a distance and it's not insignificant. And so a bow of even just a couple pixels can really be quite a distance. A lot of people ask why we don't see stars in moon footage. So I want to address that so that everybody understands the reason. All the time that I've been shooting the moon, I think during the, the uh, one of the recent lunar eclipses was the only time where we really had a star bright enough, closest to, close enough to the moon to be in footage, and that star was Spica in the constellation of Virgo. Here's the problem. The moon is so bright that if you use a telescope and an eyepiece, most people use a filter to knock the surface brightness down by 80% so that it doesn't hurt your eyes to look because it's that bright. Not that it would damage them, it's just uncomfortable to look at. When you're using a camera, and I always use manual settings, this means you have to adjust your ISO. I always adjust it all the way down to about 100, and then you adjust your f-stop to monitor how bright the image will be. And in doing that, you eliminate anything that's, you know, not nearly as bright as the moon. So if there are stars close enough to the moon, and, and actually if you go outside and pay attention to the moon on an average night for city-dwelling people like me, if you look up at the moon, it's not very often that with, even with your eyes, you can see a lot of stars near the moon. So that is the reason why 
you rarely, if ever, see stars in the same footage as, as when the full moon is being filmed. Um, there's nothing more to it than that. Let's see, what else did I want to cover? Um, other things that we're aware of here, and maybe some of you are not. This, When I first posted this footage, I think it was the second or third video up on my channel, um, I didn't even have traffic or any number of subs. I mean, I was brand new, out of the gate. And almost immediately, I was being contacted by observatories. And uh, these people were going off on me, telling me how unscientific and unprofessional I was for posting this and suggesting anything about it and it was in my mind anyhow immediately clear that there's something to this um, you know this was years ago when I was still trying to wrap my head around what it was we were seeing um, even after I understood what the footage meant um, you know there's a learning curve and since that time I have literally put hundreds of hours into studying this footage and I've done it with people who are much smarter than I will ever be and from varied backgrounds, from CCD chip engineers to camera shop owners to professional videographers, uh, we've had physicists. I mean, it's just everybody under the sun has, you know, seen this footage. A lot of people now. But uh, just the sheer volume of attacks from official sources let me know that there was something going on here. Because it wasn't like malicious It was attacks. It was like they were coming at me like they didn't want the footage to exist and one of the tactics being used was to belittle me um, that I had the gall to stand up and say that there was something worth looking at here when clearly uh, there was nothing to see so from that point forward <clears throat> I went from fall of 2012 to the spring of 2014 never having seen another wave but the whole time I knew what the 20 12 footage meant. Now when I refilmed the wave finally again in the spring of 2014 um, I started to think you know now we're getting somewhere but then the same old attacks cropped up where people were saying well it's only been you that's done this and even though I was using a different camera and different equipment um, it, it didn't matter people were saying you have to have more people do it and finally we got the German footage, the first German footage, which confirmed the wave. I spent four days vetting it, and I understood that I was 90-something percent sure um, that he had captured the wave. So as time went on, more and more people shot it. Then the attacks became that that didn't matter. We had to have two telescopes simultaneously shooting the moon to do this, which I, I agree. It would be great if that could happen, but the problem is is I went from fall of 2012 to spring of 2014 so it's not exactly like we can just pick a night go set up a couple telescopes and do this um, and the other problem is you know beyond the hours that it takes is if I wanted to try to do this having storage space for that many high definition digital files for me would be a problem I just wouldn't be able to store it all um, so we needed another independent filming which came, it just hasn't been simultaneous yet. Having said that, there is no doubt in my mind after what's happened, you know, now that we have 10 pieces of footage that show this wave and six people who have done it. And by the way, many people have reported that they've visually seen it through eyepieces, binoculars, um, South Africa, Ohio, all places all over the world have contacted me to say that they've seen this this isn't going away and in my opinion the lunar wave is a big deal maybe a big enough deal to be a game changer which brings us to the next problem a lot of people come around saying that the lunar wave doesn't mean anything unless I can prove what it is the problem with this is um, I can't prove what it is with the evidence that I have. I have strong suspicions and I have broached those suspicions in conversations and in videos but what I'm doing is showing you videoed evidence of something that should not exist that is not being acknowledged by observatories or space agencies or anyone else well with the exception of one. One gentleman in uh, I can't think, I th might have been Norway, I apologize if I got that wrong 
somewhere around there, I believe, got an observatory to respond, and uh, they knee-jerked out a response that it was clearly atmospheric, which means they didn't look at the evidence because two of the clips demonstrate that the wave does not cross the video frame. So, um, and it also ignores the 2012 footage that shows the energy pulse wrapping around the moon. Um, it ignores a lot of things, in my opinion. So at the end of the day, I have opinions about what I think this might be. I will say this much at this point, that I think it's artificial. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, I am 98% sure that we're looking at something artificial. And part of the reason I base that is just because of all the hundreds of hours I've put into looking at these, the footage of these waves. But if it was a natural event, it seems very unlikely to me that it would not have already been recorded many times, explained in textbooks, and be a known thing. And yet it doesn't seem to be a known thing, a recognized thing, or even anything that people in official positions will look at in a serious way. Because to date, what we've got is just short, terse answers uh, about it being atmosphere, equipment. Of course, people would not let go of the equipment malfunction, and that completely ignores the very first video, which is also backed up by the last footage shot in, Ger in Berlin. The camera pan in the Berlin footage proves exactly what the 2012, the first filming proved. That camera pan proves beyond a shadow of a doubt in a bulletproof way that equipment plays no role in the manufacture of the wave. It's just not possible. Um, and the camera pans prove that. Uh, and it's so important, as a matter of fact, that when Croette and I are out there shooting, we both understand that if we see the wave, we have to pan the camera as quickly as we can and, you know, try to get movement into the frame so that it's not just a locked shot. And, you know, that, that makes for some tedious viewing. But at the end of the day, no official of any kind has responded in a meaningful way no uh, officials that I'm aware of have studied this footage in a meaningful way. Although I will add, I guess some uh, people who were following my channel brought it into astronomy classes to their professor, um, and it was discussed there. And I understand that it was uh, decided that it was interesting footage. Um, I don't know too much beyond that. The point here is this. This is a real event. It's local to the moon. Um, it's been filmed a lot of times, and it's going to get filmed a lot more. Anyone out there who has the ability to film, if it's just a camera, if it's a small telescope, small telescopes are fine for the moon, go out and film right now because we're coming up to the spring equinox on the 20, probably the 21st of March. I haven't looked. It's usually the 21st or 22nd, I believe. Um, as we come to this equinox, I believe we have a good chance of filming the lunar wave. And another thing we know is it usually occurs very near full moon. Um, there's a couple of pieces of footage where there's a slight phase in the moon. Uh, you're looking at one right now on the screen, but most of them are very near full. So if you have the ability to film, even if it's only for 10 or 15 minutes, um, just you know, there's 20,000 people that are subscribed to this channel. If even a fraction of the people here go out, you know, on any given night and just film for a few minutes, we might get quite a bit of footage stacking up. And that would really push this further because at some point it won't be ignorable anymore. Um, I don't know whether that's after 20 people have filmed it or we have 100 clips. I have no way to know, but at some point, it, you know, someone's going to have to step up and talk about this. Just a second, I'm fixing my mic here. Okay, so we're coming down to the last clip, which is going to reiterate the 2012 footage. Here it is. Um, this has always been the gold standard footage. Every viewing of the lunar wave since the 2012 footage that I have seen has not been a, as dominant, as visible, as obvious a wave. And... Uh, Croet and I have considered that maybe they were aware it got filmed and there's been an effort to make it less visible because some of the clips, I mean, the wave's going by in one or two seconds, each wave, and they're much more clear than the wave you see in this footage you're looking at right now. Um, it's hard to know, but I am convinced that this is artificial. Um, there's no doubt in my mind it's artificial, and I guess I won't go too much further than that for now. 
at any rate, there it is. There's what we know about the lunar wave. Here's all 10 captures to date. Um, I hope we can get response from somebody in the real world. I suspect that response will be either atmospheric conditions, which ignores evidence, or equipment, which ignores evidence. I still, to this day, have people commenting, which have been on my channel for some time, saying equipment. And it's uh, it just gets a bit old because the evidence demonstrates that it's not equipment. This is a big deal, I believe, and I suppose there's a chance that I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. I think this is going to end up being a big deal, and I think that it will be famous someday. I hope I'm alive to see that day. At any rate, thank you all for following me uh, and watching this clip over again. I know it gets tedious, but I wanted to get all ten waves in one clip. And uh, actually, thank you all for subscribing to The Examiner. Just since the last clip that I posted today, I've already got more people subbing, and that really helps. It allows me uh, the freedom to film and to be near my equipment to film when I need to film. So there it is, 10 lunar waves. Cheers.